come with. I'm sure at some point of the tournament, we will be checking in on Oliver's kind of partners, you know, yeah. seeing how they do. Um, and so we are going to finally see there some of the go. teams. Uh, there's a couple of exciting things on either side, and we're going to let you do the reveal, though, Sebi. <laughs> you were so excited for it earlier. Yeah, I'll be so excited. So from Michele's side, so we got Rick Weiser, Persian, Xenius, Amungus, and Cinero, and Tapafini. And on the other side, we got a Ivaltal Kayoga Ganga, finally, and Cinero Stakataka and Tapolele. You say finally, it's only the second round, Sebi. <laughs> the most impatient man. In one game, where's my Mega Gengar? I've not got it yet. Uh, but you've got it now, so uh, should be good. Uh, we'll get to see if it works as well for Oliver as it does on paper when we're discussing it. Um, but, you know, Michele has some interesting answers uh, to try and deal with that. My personal favorite being that Alolan Persian. Uh, it's been a Pokemon I've been interested in for quite some time. It's had its kind of flurries of success. Um, but as we talked about before, you know, it has many, many options for status and support moves. So I'll be very curious to see which ones Michele decides to bring to this battle. Uh, whichever one is going to have to be so important to slow the role of Oliver Escalin in this match. And we already see the lead, guys. Michele is bringing Rayquaza and Tapufini, setting up the Misty Terrain. And uh, Oliver is going to go for Gengar and Tapulele, which is already a really interesting board right now, Adam. Yeah, I mean, if you're Oliver, I'm guessing you're looking at that big red button <laughs> that says Mega Revolve and activate Shadow Tag. It doesn't actually say all of that on the button. Um, and that gives uh, Mikeli this one opportunity to switch out. And that's not a bad thing to get trapped in. No, he brought in Incineroar, activating Intimidate. And I guess this Incineroar might have some tricks like U-turn or something just to, to play with the potential Shadow Tag, which is coming in now uh, better. Yeah, Shadow Tag uh, will be in play for the rest of the game. Gengar has Mega Evolved. Uh, there's also going to be a evolution from the Rayquaza uh, over on Mikali's side. So uh, both trainers revealing, you know, one of the more powerful pieces of their team uh, right off the bat. Delta Stream is going to be in play. Always a good thing to have just in case, you know, there's going to be icy winds or anything of that nature. But it doesn't look like Rayquaza is going to be afforded uh, too much time on the field. It does get caught with a moon blast uh, from this Tapu Lele. Uh, that's going to lower its special attack, usually not too important. Gengar sets up a substitute here. Uh, that substitute could be big, as it's going to take this Dragon Ascent by the looks of things. Uh, and Gengar making a very smart play there. That was really good. He lowers the defenses from Rayquaza. Uh, might be useful later on. It already took some damage. So one more Moonblast from a potential choice of Tapulele because it moved first uh, this round. Uh, might be enough for Rayquaza, but Rayquaza already stood there pretty good. So it might be a little bit of bulky one. And uh, still the situation for Oliver is uh, not looking bad. He's still got... Uh, Everything under control and going for a Moonblast into Rayquaza and taking out the first Pokemon. Yeah, Oliver just allowed to Moonblast, even though, you know, we did see that uh, Incineroar enter the field. Uh, but Incineroar makes a smart play here. I see why it didn't fake out now, as it does decide to Snarl. Uh, that will go behind the substitute of the Gengar. That is a sound-based move, so the substitute with very small and rather useless is uh, not able to protect its partner Gengar. And Tapu Lele also taking a little bit of damage and having its special attack lowered. Um, interesting here though, it's maybe too late because one of the th biggest threats has been taken out. <laughs> <laughs> one of the biggest threats is already taken out and well, he's, I guess uh, Michele just wants to position the Xerneas better to, to set them up. Uh, when, when Gengar is not do, dealing that much damage after a special attack drop, Xerneas uh, has a better day of, of setting up, and maybe Incineroar just wants to keep on snarling to get that Xerneas right. in a good position, and I've seen loads of like heal pulse Tapu Finis and, and supportive Tapu Finis to get Xerneas to a better um, help state. This might be a game plan from Michele, setting up the Xerneas after this save, and Oliver surely tries to avoid that by switching in a Shitaka Taka. Yeah, we are going to see Gengar just landing a sludge bomb uh, onto this Xerneas after the Intimidate, oh, Intimidate, pardon me, my Snarl. Uh, that's just not going to be enough. It wasn't going to be enough anyway, but it's not no. going to be even close. 
as Xerneas does take this opportunity to set up the Geomancy. Uh, the big thing here, though, is it is still going to be facing down a stack attacker next yeah. turn. And those tend to run Dire War and uh, go play defensively. Uh, you can have, like, White Guard on it, Trick Room on it. Uh, that's why I love this Pokemon. And uh, Michele tries to shuffle those Intimidates. Uh, going for a U-turn into the Stag Attacker and sending back in the Tapu Fini. Yeah, I think I would have liked to see a Snarl there. Yeah. Um, just to keep that Gengar, even though it's behind the Substitute, essentially useless. Uh, but I don't disagree with that play. You know, getting the Tapu Fini in could be huge uh, just because you do have the option to try and hit the Stag Attacker a little bit better. Yeah. Um, and that's probably important because right now, you're in an awkward spot where you need to deal with Stag Attacker and you also can't just ignore Gengar, oh. um, and you have to be a little bit worried about what the stack attacker may be carrying uh, as far as the moveset goes. Not that Tapu Fini might carry Scald or something because it's paired up with a Rayquaza to uh, uh, get rid of uh, Crowdons. Let's have a look. Xerneas Moonblast into the stack attacker and we see Sludge Bomb from Gengar barely being enough and uh, thanks to Mr. Terrain not getting the Poison and Tapu Fini goes for a Scald and taking out the Stack Attacker. Yeah, Stack Attacker comes in and uh, pretty much gets knocked out immediately. That Tapu Fini <laughs> revealing that it carries Scald, making sure that it has the option to deal big damage to Stack Attacker here. Very important, I think. Uh, information you didn't really want to give up, uh, but at the same time, it was your only chance in this one. Uh, the one thing Oliver will have going on for him now, though, is control of that terrain. Uh, set to his own Tapu Lele's choice of the Psychic Terrain uh, may be enough to kind of start pushing things over the line uh, yeah. with that little bit of extra damage. And interesting, if really, if you want to heal pools your Xerneas, you cannot protect the same turn. So you are open to attacks from Gengar, for example, which is still after a uh, behind a sub. So you might want to break the sub uh, first with Tapu Fini, save the Xerneas, uh, and then um, deal with, with Gengar and Tapu Lele. Uh, I think I, Xerneas, right? you have to try and break the sub. Uh, Dazzling Gleam from Xerneas is going to be a big, big hit, though. Uh, <laughs> Tapu Lele, though, not felled by it. And this could get really nasty for Mikele in the follow-up of this turn. Uh, it is going to be a Psy Shock into Tapu Fini there, uh, taking a good amount of damage. Gengar's Sludge Bomb will follow up into that Tapu Fini. Uh, so oh. Oliver, thinking that Xerneas was going to protect, uh, Michele didn't protect it, and even though he's down, he's definitely not out. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> this is now getting really interesting. Michele still got his uh, boost turn as he got the Incineroar. Uh, all of those both Pokemon are down to one more Dazzling Lane, uh, but he's still got probably one restricted Pokemon in the back. Yeah, I mean, the problem is, though, is that Pokemon's got to do so much work. If these two get skittled out quickly by this Xerneas, it's going to be really tough, because then the Xerneas is basically given the option to say, OK, well, I'm just going to start Moonblasting instead of having to Dazzling Gleam. Yeah. Uh, it's forced into another Dazzling Gleam realistically now. Um, but, you know, it's going to be a tough one. No, I, I guess... Think. I guess I'll Oliver might not even show which Pokemon he got in the back. Oh, no. Oh, he does. It. it is obviously Kyogre. Ooh, that's interesting, actually, because Kyogre does stand the chance of taking these hits um, a little bit better than yep. some things. It does, of course, Primal River as well. Uh, so Oliver, you know, looked like he was taking a lot of damage. But keeping that Gengar around now does kind of change things up a little bit. Gengar did protect last turn, right? Um, yes, it did. It, it protected to avoid the Dazzling Gleam. Yeah. Um, Incineroar doesn't have access to Fake Out anymore, um, so it's really all going to be on this Xerneas uh, to try and win the game. I mean, if Xerneas could go after Kyogre this turn, take that out, uh, Gengar could then retaliate onto Xerneas, and then Incineroar yeah. could do a Gengar. That's kind of the turn order you want. Oh, but it does look like we are just going to see a Dazzling Gleam. Uh, Kyogre holding on. Um, it's got to get two knockouts here, I think, or at least one. It's got to at least knock out Incineroar. And Origin Pulse does connect with both Pokemon, taking out both. That's the game. That's, That's the game, Oliver. <laughs> Oliver just uh, keeps that Kyogre in the back, uh, brings it into the end, takes Dazzling Gleam with these, and uh, retaliates with two knockouts. Um, the Origin Pulse did hit both, um, yep. you know, and that's pretty much all you needed <laughs> to do at that point. If the Origin Pulse had missed, 
Uh, that could have been a different game, but Oliver Eskelin uh, showing that that playstyle that he was so well known for in seniors, nice and you know controlled board state, uh, but turning on the offense when he needs to. Uh, showing that he can win him games here in the Masters division as well. Yeah, and um, this is this is what I really like. Like he, he positioned himself uh, at the beginning of the game. Uh, Gengar just have been on the field throughout the whole match, uh, not letting Michele switch moreover. And this was like really clever planned to the end and well played. I think. I think Michele made an interesting decision and in, yes, he brought the Incineroar in yeah. while the Gengar was about to set up the lock, but it didn't ever feel like it was helping too much. It did with the Snarl and you thought, oh, the Snarl's going to be really good here. Yeah. But Oliver was still able to put down the damage. Yeah. And so you've got to think, have well, you got a better answer to that? Because clearly <laughs> one Snarl's not enough. Maybe two. I could, I could argue that two Snarl's would be enough. Uh, yeah. But the first one on its own uh, wasn't quite there. Uh, he, he surely got some answers to uh, Mega Ginga. Like we have seen uh, Lil and Persian on the team preview. Uh, it got foul play usually. It, it got its signature move, Parting Shot, which lets it go out and uh, lower some offensive stats of the opponent Pokemon. Uh, it got some interesting uh, moves like Taunt. And we do see uh, a Rayquaza Incineral lead from Michele Gavelli's side and again Tapu Lele and Gengar lead from Oliver's side. Yeah, why switch it in when you can just lead with it? That's certainly <laughs> an option right there. Uh, the big thing here though is he doesn't, uh, Michele in this instance, does not get that chance uh, right off the lead to take control of the terrain. So yeah. if that's something he wants, he's going to have to get that through a switch and then that switch is probably going to get locked in by the ever mega evolution of the Mega Gengar. So. He's got to be careful. If you bring Tavifini in and get it locked in and stuck against the Sludge Bomb carrying Gengar, yeah. uh, you're definitely going to be in trouble here. Definitely, but um, that that Incineroar in the, in the first turn uh, can just straight up start snarling, and it takes out Gengar in like three or four hits. That's uh, let's see, and moreover, it. Um, lowers the damage output from the Tapu Lele. Yeah, that's going to be important, is lowering that damage output, making sure that a single Moonblast doesn't fell this Rayquaza on his side of the field is going to be important, um, because you do need that Rayquaza to be attacking. We've already seen how fast this Tapu Lele is, yeah. uh, so maybe a turn to protect would be, would be important here. Uh, weave that in there. But in general, you know, I do think uh, Oliver definitely has the tools in here, uh, as we do see some protects coming through to start out this game. That Protect is really interesting from Gengar. Tapolele is going uh, for Moonblast into Rayquaza. We do know that it's not quite enough to take it out, that Rayquaza is really bulky and itself going for a Dragon Ascent into the Tapolele. Let's see if this is going to be enough. Yeah, well, Tapolele is a little bit differently defensively <laughs> to Rayquaza. And in that exchange, yes, Tapolele gets the damage down, uh, Rayquaza gets the knockout easily uh, with the good old-fashioned Dragon Ascent. That does mean its defensive stats are lowered. Yeah. There may be some room to capitalize off that in a little bit. Uh, but in general, you know, I think a better turn uh, for Mikele, uh, getting that ball position and even forcing this Kyogre to come out early. And this is, this is, well, I, I don't think Oliver is in a really bad position. I don't think so at all. He, 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 got, he got the board control with Gengar. The Kyogre can go for straight up origin pulls. Their Rayquaza's uh, spe uh, special defense stat is lower thanks to Dragon Ascent. Gengar can just double into that Rayquaza. Uh, there is no option for extreme speed. Well, the other thing that it's, uh, that's exciting here is the control of the weather. Yeah. So the Delta stream's been taken away. Yeah. We know that Gengars do have access to a couple of interesting moves. We're not going to see one there, we're just going to see Sludge Bomb. Uh, but Sludge Bomb is enough. Uh, so this game could turn real nasty for Michele. Um, I actually wanted to talk about the potential of uh, Icy Wind. Yeah. So you, you get rid of the Delta Stream and then you Icy Wind while you know, you're know you in a, a better weather situation. Um, but this game's just got really, really quite dicey uh, for Michele in one turn, I think. Uh, whatever your Pokemon are in the back, there better be a good answer to Kyogre here. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Oliver still got his Gengar to take care of Michele's uh, Cernias, which is really interesting. So he brought himself in a really good position just by giving up the Tapu Lele and having a free switch in the Kyogre. And uh, now Michele got two fairy type Pokemon on the field against a Mega Gengar. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with this in team preview. 
Uh, you know that the Mega Gengar is there. You know that it carries Sludge Bomb and you've had the audacity to bring two Fairy types. Uh, certainly a bold move, but, you know, Xenis has the option to boost itself up with Geomancy and then can win any matchup. Yeah. Um, and Tabu Fini also has, you know, a good amount of natural bulk, uh, which I'll be curious to see exactly how that one goes. Uh, working on that, you know, we'll see uh, if it can take the hits and if it can buy some time, essentially, to, you know, try and carve out that opening. My biggest concern is trying to get the opening for a Geomancy is going to be very, very tough for Mikele <laughs> now. <laughs> Uh, but Gengar straight up goes for a substitute just to be safe. Uh, I guess it was just to take some potential icy wins from that Tapu Fini if the Xerne is protected. But Michele goes for the Geomancy. He's not going to protect, uh, predicting that. Uh, substitute or protect and getting the boost, which brings him in a not so bad position at all right now. Yeah, we'll see if those boosts are going to be enough. I mean, it looks like this Kyogre is going to be given a good turn. Uh, Tabu Fini will scold. Uh, it's just going to land into the substitute of Gengar, even though it's boosted by that rain. Uh, it's still not going to be able to do any more damage than that substitute allows it to. But Kyogre revealing Thunder here. Uh, one of those moves that has a little bit of contention about it. Not everyone's a big fan, as Tabu Fini is oh. easily felled by a critical hit. Uh, it was guaranteed to hit. That wasn't the concern here. The damage output was the concern, and it looks like Oliver just gets what he needs. Ah, oh, that was really interesting. Like, Michele did a really, really clever play by straight up going for the Geomancy. Uh, he played for his out, and now we see the thunder from Kyoga taking out that Tapu Fini in one hit. Yeah, I mean, the big thing here now is can Xerneas weave in Geomancies uh, where it needs to? It does, uh, not Geomancies, a uh, Dazzling Gleams after the Geomancy. You could Geomancy again, it would be, uh, be ridiculous. Uh, see what he's most scared of as he does go into the Gengar. It's not enough. He does get a special attack drop. Uh, so we get to see how well Gengar can do against the Geomancy boosted Xerneas. Not well with the Sludge Bomb. Uh, and Kyogre's going to follow up with a single target, Rain Boosted Origin Pulse. Uh, still not enough. Uh, but you've still got both these Pokemon on the field. If you Dazzling Gleam, you don't pick up Kyogre. Yeah. If you Moonblast, you don't pick up one of them. So You still uh, have to hit your moves with Kyogre. I don't know yet if it got Skull. We haven't seen that. But uh, we see Xerneas taking out the Gengar with Dazzling Gleam. Let's have a look what that Kyogre's move is going to be. And it's Origin Pulse, and it connects. So Oliver Askelin is taking the second game and wins this round. Yeah, that was a, a pretty brisk set, and I think in both games, uh, Oliver showing the pure power of a Kyogre here as well. Yeah. Um, you know, in the first game, he saved it in the back and was able to capitalize on that. In the second game, he just kind of bought it in the middle of the pack and just ran rampant with it. Yeah. It was uh, it's such good play, I think, here from, from Oliver. Uh, game one looked like it was going to be a little more difficult, but he did manage to, to squeak it out at the end there, just setting up that position and saying, nope, well, I have Kyogre. It's a primal Kyogre, you can't do with it as easy as you like. Uh, so, have fun with that. Yeah, I really do like the team choice Oliver did. Like, you basically force people to bring a Tapu Fini into a, uh, a Evaltal Kyogre ma uh, matchup, and uh, you take use of it by bringing your Mega Gengar and setting up substitutes, doing a huge amount of damage with Sludge Bomb, getting in control of the ball. So, I really do like the six Oliver brought uh, today. Uh, just because it's clever how he makes use of what people yeah, bring no. against this team. I think he's very well aware of how people respond to his team. You know, what people say like, one, two, three, four, like these are the answers I'm going to bring when I see these six. And he knows how to play against them. He knows what he's going to be doing um, and how that's really, really important to, to win games that he is down in Pokemon in, to win games that he gets off to a bad start, to win games that look like they're going to be a little bit troublesome. That's really, really top quality play, and that only comes with experience and just such good knowledge uh, of how your opponents are going to try and shut you down. That comes through practice. Yeah. And I, I really do like those setups. Like, he, he brought a choice scarf, Tapu Lele, uh, just to fix probably some holes in the team building, and you trade that a lot. That's why there's a 